Okay, working on the legs of Superman. Um, the uh, yellow paint is finally dry. And uh, I, I went back and forth on whether I wanted to glue the uh, legs or the arms first. It probably makes more sense to glue the arms first so I can work on the seams because it's harder, it's easier to handle this kit without the legs. But the problem is I don't have the flesh stones that I ordered from scale 75. Uh, they haven't arrived yet and the arms require that I paint the hands with flesh stones so rather than wait, I, you know, I'm not very good at waiting, I decided to just go ahead and start work on the uh, on gluing the legs. Now, uh, I've gone ahead and created pins. These pins basically are nails that I got at Home Depot. Uh, I cut off the uh, the head and the tip using uh, a large pair of pliers to create my pins. Here they are. Uh, I used a drill that's slightly larger, drilled into the leg first. Then I took a piece of paper uh, from an index card that I basically tore out and rolled up, stuck it in the hole, and put some paint on it, some plain black testers, and press the leg into the, uh, the torso to mark the spot where I wanted the hole to be drilled, and then I drilled it. The hole is slightly larger than the uh, pin, which gives me play, so in case I'm not quite on the center, uh, it'll still fit, and uh, doing that, Lo and behold, I get excellent fit. So I've done both legs. I'm going to go ahead and glue them uh, with CA glue and uh, and I'll be back. Legs are glued and as you can see this kit has fantastic balance. It's just standing on its own there. Nothing behind it. That's just great. Uh, I hope it keeps it when the cape goes on. Um, but it's got a wide enough stance and the uh, soles of his feet are long enough that I think he's going to be alright as long as I keep him on a shelf away from uh, uh, people who uh, might want to touch it and knock it over. <laughs> I'll have to see. But uh, I'm very pleased. He's got great balance. I may end up drilling a little bit of a couple of pins, sort of like what I did with the Predator on the base, just to make sure he doesn't fall off the base. But for now, boy, he's got a great size. Look at that. Wow. All right, talk to you later. Here he is mocked up with me holding him in place, obviously, and standing on his base. Pretty good stance. And a couple of things jump out at me immediately. Uh, obviously the seams, which I've shown you guys before and which I'll be working on. The fingernails of the right hand are not visible, so I'm not even going to bother painting them separately. The only ones that are really seen are the ones in the, excuse me, that's the left hand. Uh, the, the right hand, they're right there and yeah, I'll, I'll work on them just for the sake of having the detail, but it's not something that's going to really be noticed. The head uh, has a convenient uh, demarcation where the seam would be. Uh, it will have to be lifted a little bit, a, a plastic plate underneath it should do the trick, like a styrene plate so it's flush with the uh, with the torso because it tends to sink in if I don't do that but conveniently the whole thing is skin colored and of course the hair and the eyes and the eyebrows, the lips, all that detail stuff but I don't have to worry about uniform colors there so 
I don't even have to worry about those seams being worked because those are natural separations between his skin and the uniform. Um, as far as, pardon the interruption, um, as far as the cape itself, um, it should go on relatively easily. Uh, it'll be glued so it's forward a little bit. As you can see, it fits very nicely, but it does require a little bit of gluing so it looks like it's coming out of his uh, outfit like it's supposed to. So now I'll just let him cure, cure overnight, let those legs really cure in place. And tomorrow, while I wait for the skin flesh tones to come in, I think I'll clean them up, take care of all those smudges and uh, little details, things that imperfections and of course the uh, the belt straps which need to be painted uh, the red paint has probably evaporated to some degree over the past couple of days so it's going to be thicker and I think I can use a paintbrush to paint it on uh, but I, I love the size as I said great scale he's going to make a beautiful display piece anyway thanks for watching and uh, I'll be back soon Back with Superman. It's been a couple of weeks since I've worked on him. I was waiting on the flesh paints to arrive from scale 75. And they have, and I've got mixed reviews on these. First of all, let me tell you what I've done with him. I, uh, I've been basically retouching little boo-boos here and there. I had some overspray of uh, red onto the yellow. I fixed that. And some overspray of uh, yellow onto the red and vice versa and onto the blue and over by the belt and, and the legs and I've fixed all that uh, so he, he's looking really sharp now uh, little faded spots from where I'd set him down and stuff I've, I've already fixed those uh, so I turned my attention to the skin and utilizing these things I also have the archer decals I'm excited to use those I've got a, an assortment of several different types for his eyes. Now these paints are from Spain. I don't know if they're related to the Vallejo paints which I also believe are from Spain. They were advertised as being flesh paint set, water acrylic uh, for modeling and figures and they have a system where they uh, explain to you how to paint the face. They've got two examples here, white skin and Indian skin and you go through a sequence of coloring and shading utilizing the different paints as they um, they are applied according to them uh, SC20 is pink SC21 is pink flesh and SC20 is basic flesh and you're supposed to apply the pink flesh first and then shade with the basic flesh and on and on and, and then apply the, uh, the rest of the details what they didn't tell me, which I suppose I should have known, is that these things are not ready to go for the airbrush right out of the bottle. They need to be thinned. And of course, something else they neglected to tell you when they sold you is they sell their own thinner. But that's okay because since this is a, a basic acrylic, I just used a Tamiya uh, acrylic thinner and it seemed to work. The only problem I had, which I guess has to do with uh, the mix ratio, is the paint came out too runny. Um, and the reason I think is because these things are just so small I was afraid to run out. I, I squirted a, some, some on the bottom of my Dixie cup and then added a little bit of the uh, thinner and uh, then tried to apply it to the hands which would be my first experiment since you don't get to see a lot of them and at first I'd get a lot of runniness I played with the uh, mixture adding a little bit more of the paint to make it thicker and then and I'm going at 18 psi on this with the uh, airbrush so it's really low but what I did was I I air dried with uh, my heat gun and then I applied with the airbrush a little higher up so that it dusted it instead of just spraying with the air and that seemed to work much better I'm much happier with the result now uh, it actually looks like skin 
I'm not going to try and, and shade with other, other different shades of skin onto here because when you put these on you can hardly see the hands. I'm not even going to do the fingernails. Um, but the effect is pretty nice if you bear with me for a second here I will show you. Let me um, let me put the uh, arms crossed uh, here which is probably the next thing I'm going to do. Um, that's how the hands are supposed to go and um, if you look at them you get just the right view of the hands they look like hands with flesh color no need for a lot of detail and that does it that's fine for the hands where I'm more concerned is with the face because I do want to do a good job with that with different shadings just like they recommend here and uh, I guess I'm gonna have to mix up these things in smaller cups not these Dixie cups because these things are huge and try and make very small batches which are a little thicker so that it sprays onto onto the model the way I like it to um, I think it's just a question of experimenting but just for future reference guys in case you didn't know I guess this should have been obvious to me but it wasn't I'm sure many of you know these things are not thinned and the Vallejo uh, flesh paints I believe they're not thinned either although I could be wrong about that I think the next uh, set of uh, flesh paints I try will probably be the Vallejos these are supposed to be fast drying and they were fairly fast drying I, I dried them with the uh, with a heat gun though to accelerate it and uh, that seemed to work. Uh, they're nice and dry now. So my next step is I'm going to glue the hands, uh, the arms, uh, onto the uh, the shoulders. I don't believe I'll be using pins with these. They're not very heavy. Um, I didn't use them for the arms of the uh, Predator or Accelerator, and he did fine. Uh, I, I used them for the legs, as I described, and uh, those are solid as a rock, man. And this thing has good balance too. Uh, so that's my next step and I'll show you how it comes out. Uh, after I glue it together I'll, I'll have to work on the seams of course and I'll probably have to retouch some. Hopefully I don't ruin the, uh, the red from the S because I finally got it the way I like it. But we'll see. Anyway, talk to you soon. Back with soups and I have uh, completed work on the right shoulder seam and as you can see big difference. Left shoulder obviously hasn't been done yet, right shoulder has. Um, not perfect but good enough for government work, right? Let me tell you what I did and then I'll tell you some of the caveats that uh, you should keep in mind with this kit or any figure kit really. And uh, some of the principles you should keep in mind. I began by, I started obviously with the seam looking like this. And I went ahead and, and I placed masking tape to protect the S mainly. And also along the sides here, but you know in retrospect, probably didn't need that. And I took it off after I finished with the, uh, with the putty. The only important area that I needed to protect was the S because I didn't want to sand over it and remove it. It's a lot harder to get this painted back up again. So I went ahead and, and um, um, prepared it that way. And then I took 320 grit and I sanded both in the direction of the seam and perpendicular to the seam. The idea being to try and get the uh, edges as smooth as possible. Now. I was under no illusions that I was going to be able to get this to seal up or even out the way a styrene kit will simply because the seam is too big and too separated. But uh, it was a good starting point. Then I proceeded to fill, fill the seam up with uh, squadron putty and uh, after I did I went ahead and started sanding again in the direction of the seam and, the, and perpendicular to it with a 320 grit once again. I repeated that process, oh, I would say about three or four times until I was happy that the, um, 
that the seam had disappeared sufficiently for me to try some primer. And then I went ahead and sprayed primer and the primer obviously brings out the seam and whatever areas need to be worked on. So after I sprayed primer again I sanded with 320 in both directions and uh, applied some more primer. I repeated that about three or four times as well until I reached the point where I figured I had enough uh, enough smoothness that I was happy with it. Uh, then I went ahead and sprayed with a paint the color. Uh, at that point I did notice some issues which required a bit more sanding and then spraying again. Now the sanding I did there was with 600 grit because I didn't want to dig in too much. Uh, mainly it was areas of where the paint had uh, roughened up or hadn't taken the way. And, and you can still tell there's some imperfections. There's a little hole there where the seam is. Uh, I may come back and and fill that in and resand simply because it's it's a bit too noticeable. Now if you look closely enough you will see the seam. Uh, I, I could never knock it down completely but there comes a point of diminishing returns with these things. If you look closely you can see that there's a difference in the curvature of the two deltoid muscles uh, mainly because I had to sand the hell out of this area to smooth it out and even though I tried to sand in the direction of the curvature of the muscle so I could smooth it out you still get some deformation of, of the contours of the kit and you have to at some point say okay enough otherwise I'm going to ruin the kit so uh, even though it's not perfect it's good enough that uh, when you stand uh, a foot or two away and after everything is painted up and 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 final coated and everything I think it'll look fantastic um, my my main goal was to to make that thing disappear as much as possible uh, fortunately with all the muscle contours and creases and all uh, they break up the uh, the smoothness of the surface so it hides it pretty well I had some similar issues with the Hulk but that's a vinyl kit it's a different story uh, however uh, the principles are the same at some point you you have to say okay enough uh, it's gonna look fine and, and I think it does so I'll come back and I'll fix a couple minor imperfections tomorrow after the paint dries do a little bit more sanding and another uh, round of the of the blue paint and I think I'll be alright and then I'll work on the left shoulder now once I'm done with the left shoulder uh, all that's left is the cape and the head and those are right over here next to my Cardassian ship <laughs> which is on pause right now while I wait for some SMDs um, the cape is ready the head is not that's uh, I've left that for last the best for last right um, that should be interesting anyway uh, you can see the hands uh, the effect is pretty good got a little bit of dusting of blue there hmm gonna have to fix that all right um, the effect is a uh, is pretty good they look like hands and they look like they're flesh colored and that's all I can ask for you don't really get to see a lot of them anyway okay that's the latest on soups and uh, I'll uh, come back with another update soon talk to you later continuing with Superman I've gotten a lot done tonight let me take you through it so you can see I've got the cape glued and the clamps are in place and it's drying uh, got the seam on the left shoulder taken care of and I modified my technique uh, and I'm much happier with the way the seam on the left side got knocked down as opposed to the right side although I did come back and fix this to make it less noticeable you still can see a little bit but honestly uh, with the cape in place and everything it's going to be awful difficult to see much um, what I did was instead of pre-sanding with 320 before putting the putty on, I simply went ahead and put the putty on. Uh, I figured this wasn't a flat surface as we talked about, the deltoid has a curvature 
and you want to preserve that as much as you can. So I applied the putty and then I sanded in a circular motion with a 320 uh, and did it more lightly. The idea being, of course, as I have done with Spidey before, when you have a seam that's kind of difficult, you don't want to get rid of all the uh, putty. I've found that if you leave some putty caked on top and you simply sand it and smooth it so it incorporates itself to the surface and disappears, you've basically taken care of the seam. If you do it right and you sand down to the point where it's not noticeable but not all the way down to the seam, you will not get the indentation. And that's what I did here. I, I lightly sanded with 320 in a circular motion all over. Then I knocked it down with 600 to, uh, to smooth it out. Then I primered and lo and behold the seam was pretty much gone. So I, um, I did a light sanding with 600 on the primer and I painted and that was it. All it took was one application and I was done with the seam on this side. I liked it so much how it worked that I came over here and I, <laughs> I went straight to the parts that were still noticeable and applied some putty and did the same exact thing and it worked. It, it knocked it down significantly. Um, from far away to my eye you can't see them anymore so that's all that matters. Uh, I went ahead and uh, touched up some some more blue and red where were needed on the cape and on 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 the uniform, and um, also I fixed the hands, and then I applied the uh, cape and clamped it, and now it's curing, and I will check it out tomorrow. The other thing I turned to was the face, and I have to say, for a first effort, ta -da, I am very pleased. I used the Scale 75, as I told you, paints, and I used the instructions that are included using the sequence of shadings just exactly how they said. Working from left to right, slowly shading, started with the uh, SC21 and SC20, spraying from the bottom of the face to create some shadowing, then covered the upper zones with uh, uh, SC20 and SC19 which is golden to give give him more of a suntan then I apply a shadow with the darker ones just like it said from the bottom and then I highlighted the nose, the top of the eyebrows, the cheekbones and the chin with light skin to emphasize them. I outlined the eye sockets with the darker shades and then I went ahead and I took flat black Tamiya and I painted his his hair and the eyebrows lightly so that they look like eyebrows and not just uh, painted on like eyebrows. And then I mixed a slight bit of white with the flat black to get a very, very dark gray and sort of shaded it on top to, to make the hair look a bit more natural, not so cartoonish, uh, although it's still pretty black. Uh, the result is very pleasing. I have a uh, cheek shadowing and um, the skin and the face look very natural and I went ahead and I made some off-white with the flat white to me yet yeah, added just a smidgen of brown to make it off-white and I painted the eyeballs uh, the next steps are going to be emphasizing the lips a little bit more and uh, adding a bit of a pink wash to the to the eyes to uh, make it look like real eyes. You know, real eyes have a slight reddish tinge around the edges uh, from the conjunctiva um, and the blood vessels. Uh, that was a nice tip from uh, my friend Adam, Mr. Atos on SFMA. He's quite an artist and uh, he has a lot of uh, insights into these things. Um, interestingly, before I'd read on the instructions that uh, you're supposed to shade the, uh, the nose and the cheekbones and and such with and, and the chin with a lighter color he had mentioned it to me <laughs> I guess that's a pretty uh, typical thing that artists will notice uh, that mere mortals like us that are not artists do not notice I just have to follow the instructions but all in all uh, for a first effort I am very pleased uh, don't know if I need to do anything with the ears maybe a little shading on the inside but frankly just a shadow alone 
gives it enough definition. So once I'm finished with the lips and and washing with pink on the eyes, I will go ahead and add the Archer decals. I've already picked uh, the sheet that I'm going to use. I just got to get the right size. I'm going to use a photorealistic uh, eyeballs, and I'm going to use a one of these blue shades. Don't know which one will fit them just yet. I'll have to see. Uh, I'll use uh, the primer that uh, Vince Bell Customs uh, uh, had in which he uh, cut it a certain way to be able to slide it on because these things are tiny. Uh, also after I, I've applied that I'll probably put some uh, future or some gloss onto the eyes to make them look more shiny like real eyes. And uh, then I'll glue the, the head onto the body and we'll be done. Uh, I put a couple of strips of plastic there as you can see because uh, when I place the head onto the the body it tended to sink a little bit um, and I wanted the edge to be flush so it looked like he had some uh, had a uniform on which was skin tight so getting close to the end of this build and uh, I've had a lot of fun with this one I've received a few of the figures from uh, uh, underworld kits and I am anxious to build them I also have those two from uh, Bad Fairy Productions, the Flash and the Green Lantern uh, haven't decided which, uh, which which one will be my next figure build but uh, whichever one I choose I'm sure I'll, I'll have a blast with it uh, also stay tuned for my uh, Cardassian as, uh, as soon as I uh, as soon as I get those uh, orange SMDs I'll continue building that and uh, I think I should be finished with them, uh, uh, the ship that is, uh, pretty soon. Anyway, thanks for looking and I uh, hope you're enjoying the build as much as I am. See you soon. Okay, Superman is done. I uh, finally finished him tonight and um, in fact he's still a little wet from the uh, dull coat that I applied, the tester's dull coat. As the final coat um, but he is done let me show you a couple of shots here standing on his base I have not glued him onto the base or put any nails or anything he's just balanced on his own there um, I still don't know if I will put something in the base like nails or screws to go up into his sole so he's more stable or I could just lean him up against the wall although the cape does come off of him and if he leans too far I mean I let it cure for 24 hours so I don't think it'll be a problem but still anyway as far as the eyes are concerned I was able to use the decals I chose uh, Oops, losing a little bit of the uh, focus. A good size uh, after I added a little bit of pink wash. Using simply pink to me, uh, really dilute and just touched each eyeball so I could get a little pink tinge on the edges. Uh, I then chose the size which should be about half the size of the eyeball. Cut the top off uh, so the eye was about one, th one third under the eyelid and then the bottom barely cut it as per the instructions and uh, I applied the decals. I had more trouble with the left eye than I did with the right but I was able to get them both on there and then I applied a little uh, microsole and uh, that was the end of it. Oh yeah and then after the microsole dried I applied some future give the eye a, a more watery appearance. Uh, then finally I just uh, dulled them down a little bit with the uh, testers dull coat. The hair is still a little shiny but it's a lot better than it was believe me. And uh, that's it. So this is a blast to build. I finally have a Nice uh, Superman to display, and 
I hope you guys enjoy the build. Talk to you later.